Welcome. This presentation will help you understand the concept of mastery learning and allow you the opportunity to consider how elements of mastery learning can be utilized within your classrooms. This brief presentation will review the following topics. Time-based learning versus mastery learning, defining mastery learning, goals of mastery learning, and elements of mastery learning. The Carnegie Unit is considered a time-based standard of student progress. A course is organized around a set time frame and the learning outcomes vary within each class. Mastery learning does not follow the same principles as the Carnegie Unit. In mastery learning, students master one learning objective before moving on to an additional objective with the help of differentiated instructional supports and supplemental resources to help them learn the objectives. Multiple attempts at formative assessments are often provided to help students show mastery around a learning objective before they move on to additional learning objectives. The learning in class tends to build upon the concept that one objective is mastered before moving on to the next objective to make the process of learning smoother throughout class. Benjamin Bloom defined mastery learning way back in 1968. His thoughts around mastery learning were, if students are normally distributed with respect to aptitude for some subject, mathematics, science, literature, history, etc., and all the students are provided the same instruction, same in terms of amount of instruction, quality of instruction, and time available for learning. The end result will be a normal distribution on an appropriate measure of achievement. Furthermore, the relationship between aptitude and achievement will be relatively high. Conversely, if the students are normally distributed with respect to aptitude, but the kind and quality of instruction and the amount of time available for learning are made appropriate to the characteristics and needs of each student, the majority of students may be expected to achieve mastery in that subject. And the relationship between aptitude and achievement should approach zero. Creating learning environments that promote success can help more students achieve success and persist on through their degree program. This concept goes back to Benjamin Bloom's idea that mastery learning has two key principles, individualized instruction and tutoring as educational elements of highly effective educational environments. The goal of mastery learning is for every learner to achieve mastery. This means that the amount of learning is constant, students are not left behind, and corrective opportunities are provided to help everyone achieve mastery on a learning objective. There are many elements that help make up a mastery learning experience. One of the first items is to create diagnostic pre-assessment opportunities that can help determine if students have the prerequisite knowledge and skills needed for success in the next learning event. The results of the pre-assessment can allow you, as the facilitator, the opportunity to teach skills or concepts that students need to move into the next learning objective in class. As the facilitator, you can also use the results to help identify students who might be at risk and might need additional support during the instructional process. Another item in mastery learning is quality group-based instruction that is developmentally appropriate. As you create this aspect for your course, you need to adapt your materials to the learning context while trying to tie them to your students' interests and experiences. As learning progresses, it's important for you to monitor the learning that is occurring for all of your students. To monitor learning, you can use formative assessments that allow students to know how they are doing in learning and provide you the opportunity to provide them with prescriptive feedback. Formative assessments can also reinforce what is learned for students and shows them areas that they need to continue working through to achieve mastery. As the facilitator, your role includes providing quality corrective instruction to help students work through learning problems that formative assessments show. 
Corrective instruction approaches provide different opportunities for your students to learn the objectives being taught. This is where tutoring and group learning can be used to enhance learning. With the mastery learning approach, assessments become an ongoing effort to help students learn the course objectives. After students work through corrective activities, they are given the opportunities to take a second parallel formative assessment to see if they are able to demonstrate mastery and experience success in the learning process. Mastery learning also provides additional activities to enrich the learning experience for those who have mastered the learning objectives and might not need corrective instruction. Learners can explore topics into greater depth when the topics interest them that go beyond the established curriculum. It is important to develop valuable learning experiences that enrich the learning experience for students so that they don't feel that enrichment is just busy work. This presentation has been an overview of mastery learning and how this method has the potential to enhance student success and learning in your classroom. Mastery learning provides opportunities for students to enrich their learning processes while expanding learning that grows with their interests and ability to build upon concepts being learned. Please use the following references to help continue your learning around mastery learning concepts.